All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and to the garage. Uh, today we got another Mach-E video, so uh, let's get into it. Okay, so for this video we're going to be talking about range tests in town, just casual around town. Uh, what kind of range do I get with my Mach-E? So this is a 2022 uh, Mustang Mach-E. Um, it's the standard range battery. So 70 kilowatt hours usable. Uh, it's about 76 or so, 77 installed. Um, it is all wheel drive. So it has the front and rear motors. Um, not the GT though. The GT also has front and rear, but the front motor is much larger. Uh, same size as the one in the rear where in the uh, non GTs with all wheel drive, it's a smaller motor up front, uh, but still two motors. And it's the premium trim, uh, which means it's got um, the glass roof, it's got the uh, front passenger seat that's powered, the rear lift gate that's powered. Um, it's on 19 inch wheels, um, you know, that are standard for the Mach-E premium, but it's not the aero wheels like you get on the Route 1 edition. So this actually is the worst range Mach-E of the whole lineup currently. Um, the GT has the larger battery, so it's able to make up some of the range with the bigger battery. Um, you can get this in the extended range, but this is not that standard range. Um, you can get the Route 1, which is rear wheel drive only, um, and it also has the larger battery. Um, and then you can also get the standard range in the rear wheel drive and the, um, in both the premium and select trims. Um, and that will give you better range too, just using the one motor. So this is the uh, worst configuration in terms of range for the Mach-E lineup. Uh, but it's what I wanted. I knew that going into it. And so I uh, thought I'd share, you know, what kind of range I get around town. So my real motivation for doing this test is just to give kind of some real life driving and just see, you know, what do I actually get um, with a variety of temperatures, conditions, etc. Um, and what I wanted to share is maybe you're somebody that's considering buying one of these, but you can't charge at home at all. Um, or if you can, it's maybe on a 110 outlet. Uh, maybe you're in an apartment, uh, don't really have a great place to charge. Maybe you can charge a little bit at work. Um, or maybe really your only option is to go charge at public chargers, um, DC fast chargers, um, and the rest of the week. Uh, the car is just going to be parked and you can't plug it in. So what do you actually get in terms of range? So uh, my testing, uh, what I did is I started at 90% uh, state of charge indicated on the display. Um, you know, that's what Ford recommends charging to, to, you know, help preserve battery life. Um, obviously going a little bit lower than that's probably even better, but Ford recommends 90%. And then uh, down to 10% uh, state of charge. So I'm using 80% of the battery, 10% uh, uh, kind of buffer there on each end. Now, all the research I've done is that Ford has built a buffer into uh, like on top of and below the state of charge indicated. So when it says 100% on the display in the car, the actual battery is probably somewhere between 96 and 98% fully charged uh, to kind of preserve uh, the battery life there. Um, and then also the opposite is true when you're, when the car would say 0%, 1%, the battery is actually probably somewhere around two to 4%, something like that. Um, so you can read the high voltage battery state of charge if you have one of the OBD2 readers that you plug in um, under the dash. Um, I do not have one of those. That would tell you even more information about the state of charge of the actual high voltage battery. Um, but I'm just going with everything that's indicated on the display. Um, and talking about those buffers again, um, you know, everything I've researched is that when the display says you're at 50%, you actually are in the middle of the battery or very close. So what I did in my testing is I actually did eight different tests, um, you know, eight different trips. And the first two, I did the full 90 down to 10 uh, state of charge. Um, the next six, I did 90 down to 
And then what I did is I doubled the mileage um, because what I found is that it actually uh, calculated very closely to what I was getting when I went the full 90-10. Um, it also makes sense with 50% being uh, pretty much exactly the middle of the battery that 90 to 50 is gonna be the same amount of range that you should get from 50 down to 10. Um, if I'm wrong about that, you can let me know in the comments below, but that's my understanding. Um, now the car is gonna perform a little bit differently at the lower states of charge. Um, it's not gonna have quite as much power for acceleration and stuff like that, but uh, really the car feels pretty much the same in most cases, at least to me. Um, and we're not really talking about performance here, we're talking about range. Um, so, all of this being said, your mileage may vary, your mileage will vary. It depends on how you drive, it depends on the temperature outside, which you'll see when I share the results here. Um, you know, what state of charge did you start at? Uh, how windy is it outside? Um, all these factors affect all cars, it's just they're more noticeable on an EV because your range is a little bit less than a typical gas car, and these factors can impact your range a lot more, specifically the temperature one in terms of running climate control and stuff like that. Um, okay, so what did I actually do, you know, in terms of trying to make the, the uh, stats and stuff reliable, uh, dependable? Uh, so tire pressures on the car, it, it recommends on the door sticker, uh, 39 PSI. Um, so that's what the car had for all the tests. I would occasionally go check it. And uh, you know, when the tires are cold, they're 38 to 39, pretty much 39 all the time. And then uh, when I'm driving, I would see them get up to 40, 41. So that all looked normal. There wasn't like a low tire or anything like that. Um, and so I mentioned the eight different tests. Um, six of the tests were done 90 to 50, and two of them were the full 90 to 100. Um, so how far did I actually go? So I actually drove 747 miles um, over these eight tests. Um, you know, doing my doubling mileage for the six tests that were um, 90 to 50, um, I calculated uh, 1,222 miles that ideally you would get if you had kept going. Um, I actually drove for 24.5 hours, you know, over a period of time to, to get all these numbers. Um, and that calculates to about 40.5 hours, uh, you know, if you had done the full 90 to 10%. Um, time of year. So this has been done kind of since my last video until now. So February uh, to May, um, you know, I live in southern Idaho, so we do get winter here. Um, it's not nearly as extreme as you know, further up north. And so uh, we really have a nice range of temperatures. So temperatures, I never really saw much below 30 degrees. Maybe I saw 28 for, you know, one couple of miles of one of the drives. Um, and then I, I've seen as high as uh, mid 70s or so on some of the last tests. So pretty decent range of temperature. You know, several of the drives were, um, you know, several of the, those tests were a full you know, the, the whole time the, you know, it never got above 45 degrees, you know, it was in those 30 and 40s the whole time. Uh, the car is parked in the garage um, overnight, but when I go to work, it's sitting outside. Um, and also the, this whole time, the, the car was never plugged in in between tests. So if I was going 90 down to 50, I never plugged it in in any of that time. I didn't set the car to only charge to 50 and you know, it's the car's at 72% in the middle of the test and I plugged it in, I did not do that. So it was never plugged in uh, in between, uh, sorry, it was never plugged in during a test. Obviously when it was time to reset, I would plug it in and charge it. All of the charging was done on level one and level two charging. Um, that shouldn't really matter, but um, you know, I have noticed during DC fast charging, um, you know, maybe you give the car 30 minutes or an hour kind of after it charges and that uh, per battery percentage might fluctuate a little bit, like one or 2% as it kind of recalibrates from quickly changing uh, charge level. So the one and 2%, a little bit more steady charge. Um, but again, not a big deal, just noting it. Um, when I looked at all of the data that the little trip computer says in the car, 
Um, the mileage was was accurate from everything I could tell. It said I drove 125 miles or whatever I drove, and that matched with what the odometer showed that had transpired during that test. So that all looked accurate. Um, the time it took me to drive, um, that was also logged, and that's how I calculate my average speed. So how fast was I going on average during the test, which I'll share. That'll look good. The one number that looked weird in the car is the, the kilowatt hour uh, per mile calculation that the car does. Um, I'll, I'll put up a clip here of it fluctuating uh, by not just 0.1, but 0.2 and then back. So it's going from like 3.1 up to 3.3 and then back to 3.1 in a very short amount of time. And so um, I think there's some rounding thing or something going on there. Um, the car is not like totally wrong. Like the, the, the efficiency calculations coming up with feels ballpark. It feels pretty close, but I wouldn't read too much into those numbers. Um, but the, the mileage number, the battery state of charge, how long it took me to travel that mileage, um, that all feels pretty rock solid and uh, checks out. Climate controls, um, I was mentioning the temperature. So when it was cold out, you know, I'm, I'm, I ran the heat. Um, I set the heat on auto to like the medium fan speed on, there's like three auto settings. So it's set to the middle one, um, 74 to 75 degrees. Um, with the AC, uh, when it got warmer, I'm, I'm usually, uh, everything's the same there, except it's a little cooler at 72. Um, some of the trips, if it was nice out in the 60s, 65, I was, um, had the windows down. So not trying to hyper mile, not trying to like get maximum range. I'm just trying to, you know, day in the life of an average person driving this car at different temperatures, what do you get? Um, regen is another big one. So, uh, there's a little setting you can turn on for brake coach and it shows you when you come to a stop, um, how much of your energy was regenerated everywhere from zero to hundred percent. And generally I do pretty well on the regen. Um, I'm 99, hundred percent a lot of the time. Um, you know, I, I don't usually go much below 95. There's maybe occasional time if somebody cut me off or something where maybe I'm only at 80% or something like that, or a light changes and you need to stop. Uh, but most of the time I'm close to 100% on regen. I drove, I actually drove 747 miles um, and I actually drove 24 and a half hours. Um, and my average speed was 30.4 miles per hour. So uh, what did that actually look like? What that actually looked like, um, around here, we have a lot of roads that are 30 to 45 miles an hour. So that's a big part of it. Um, I also occasionally get on the interstate. So, you know, maybe go a couple exits, you know, maybe going five, 10 miles on the interstate for some of the trips, uh, some stop and go and downtown type traffic. Um, so, some of the trips were a little slower, kind of in the mid to upper 20s, and some of them were a little faster up in the, you know, low to mid 30 mile per hour. So none of them was exclusively highway. None of them were ex exclusively bumper to bumper. Kind of a nice mix. Okay, so let's talk trips. And remember, this is 80% of the battery, not 100%. Uh, my worst mileage trip for 80% of the battery was 128.8 miles. Um, you know, that was a, that was a colder weather time. So the average temperature during that was about 35 degrees. So there were some moments there where it was upper twenties and some where it was, um, you know, high thirties, low forties, uh, generally pretty cold temperature. Um, and then I calculated, you know, if you actually had done the whole hundred percent charge, you're at about 155 miles. So. That's on the lower end. Um, the EPA rating for the car um, is 224 miles. Um, that's what the EPA rates it at. Uh, not so great on that one. Um, the next one, uh, pretty much all the same driving except the temperature was warmer. So it was a, on average about 10 degrees warmer, 45 degrees, still definitely running that heat. 45, still fairly cold, especially when you get some wind. Um, so that trip was 143 miles. 
Um, and then if you went the full 100%, that'd be 171, 172 miles. Um, and then the next trips here, um, you can see, you know, kind of at a variety of temperatures. The next one was back at 35 degrees on average, and I got 130 miles that time. Um, and in that case, that's where I doubled the uh, mileage that I got. So I actually drove 65 miles. Um, so doubling it, you know, I, I got roughly uh, the same mileage I got in the first time doing the full 90 to 10. Um, some of the other trips here. So my best one was uh, when the temperature average was about 70 degrees. Um, this other trip, very similar average was about 65 degrees. So I'm in that 100, 180 range now, 182, 184 miles for 80% of the battery. Um, and if you used 100%, you're at the 221, 218 miles. You know, that's, that's pretty much where the EPA is at in terms of what they're, they're rating. So uh, you can kind of see the full range here. You know, I'll put up, put up the graph and you can see, uh, you know, temperature has a huge effect. Um, you know, a lot of that is on the climate, you know, electric heat, uh, that uses a lot of energy. Um, you know, the air conditioning does use energy, of course, but it's not nearly as impactful as using the heat. Uh, you're also warming up the battery. The battery really likes to be around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And so when it gets significantly below that, you're using additional energy to, to, to warm up the battery. Um, so it's a, uh, you know, really no surprise here. Um, and, uh, you know, I really hope this, this kind of helps show, you know, what kind of mileage do I really get around town, running to the grocery store, driving to work, maybe taking a, you know, that store that's, you know, 20, 25 minutes away with a little bit of interstate, a little bit of stop and go, you know, that, that's all the type of driving I was doing. Um, on average, I was pulling about 56, 57 kilowatt hours out of the battery, you know, just kind of assuming, you know, the battery is 70 kilowatt hours usable. Um, and then how much I used, you know, I'm in that 56, 57 kilowatt hours coming out. And then you can see my, um, what the car showed as my average miles per kilowatt hour, um, you know, pretty big, pretty big difference there. So everything from two and a half on that coldest day to, you know, in the upper threes on the warmer days when I'm using the AC or have the windows down. Um, last thing I'll show is uh, the different uh, percentages of climate use. So you can see quite a range here, which, you know, um, which tracks with the, the, ex the external temp, a lot more climate usage uh, with the much colder temperatures. If you like this video and uh, you want to see more content on range, um, you know, maybe I'll keep doing this. Um, definitely the warmer weather and the heat, you know, around that 70 degree mark is really ideal where you're just running a little bit of AC or very little. Um, I suspect once it gets hotter up into the 90, 100 degree temperatures, um, we'll see that range come back down a little bit, you know, as you're really pumping the AC, but uh, I don't have anything written down, you know, this detailed from last summer, uh, but my experience with the car uh, in those hotter temperatures is it was still fairly efficient. All right, well, that concludes today's Mach-E video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have questions, comments, other ideas for doing range tests, uh, let me know in the comments, and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.